Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we are going to be starting the process of hoshigaki or making dried persimmons. This is a technique that Japanese people and really people of different Asian cultures have been doing for years. And it's really simple is that you take a persimmon, you peel off the skin. I took myself a nice little peeler, got all these done. And then that exposes the flesh on the inside. And this also not only dries the persimmon, but it also removes that astringency. This is a variety here called Hychia. I got these here at the store. They're such a large persimmon, they're perfect for drying. They really dry well in different forms I've dried these. Not, never done it this particular way. However, um, they shrink down to quite a smaller size. So if you start out with a bigger persimmon, you end up with a bigger dried fruit. And the goal here for me is to get this so perfectly dried, the outside starts to crystallize, but the inside remains gooey and jammy. And that to me is the perfect persimmon, the perfect dried persimmon. This is a real special treat for those of you guys who have never done this. This is incredible. The persimmon, is incredible and it's like four fruits in one. If I were to eat this right now, and this was not as, let's say it wasn't an astringent persimmon, right? Cause there's two types. There's some that are astringent, there's some that are not astringent. This would a lot, this would be very mild, not that sweet, um, pretty crisp like an apple, firm as the Fuyu types are. Then the astringent types, when they start to get soft and start to dry, you know, get that drying process going, because these fruits are so incredible that they, they really can dry on their own. You don't really need to put them in a dehydrator. You don't really need to have them in the most perfect conditions. The fruit is incredible in its drying capabilities. And that's kind of what we got here right now is we've got it in the sunroom and the sunroom probably isn't the best place. It's varying temperature in here. I'm not sure the temperature really is gonna matter all that much. It would probably be helpful if I got these guys maybe against the, the wall here so that they got some sun, you know, kind of like a sun-dried tomato. We can have sun-dried persimmons. Not really, but I'm sure the temperature in here needs to be somewhat warm, but the main thing that we're worrying about is the airflow. We have our fan running and it produces just a really nice breeze in here, low humidity. And that basically is getting this drying process going. And it should take about 20 to 30 days before these are completely done. We're gonna check them, we're gonna give them a squeeze. You keep squeezing them, that gets some of that moisture out of there. Um, you check the internal consistency and then you've got yourself a perfect dried persimmon hoshigaki. Uh, but as I was saying, these guys start out as real crisp and mild. And then when they start to dry, they become very gooey, like a marshmallow, the consistency of a, like a campfire marshmallow. It's just very gooey. It starts to get very sweet. You start getting weird, interesting sugar flavors. In fact, I do find that they taste a lot like a marshmallow. Um, I find that they have interesting spice flavors. Then they start to intensify and dry even further and they turn into something jammy, very jammy. Um, a lot like eating jam, a lot like a date. And start, they start to taste a lot like dates and a lot like raisins, a lot like dried figs. Cause then they're starting to get dried. They have that dried fruit flavor to them. Some persimmons have that flavor more pronounced than others. It's really incredible. I love that flavor uh, that you can have kind of a dried fruit flavor in a fruit that really isn't dry. It's pretty awesome. Then once they're completely dried, they taste a lot like a, a potato. They have like the consistency of a potato. It's kind of strange, but um, that's sort of how this works. It's like four fruits in one. And normally what you do for hoshigaki is that we string them up and people will have them like dangling off their houses and just rows. They have so many persimmons. Um, I've seen so many pictures of this. We talked about it in our latest episode of Fruit Talk and they string them up. Unfortunately for me, I don't have the luxury of stringing these guys up. One, I don't have a string, but two, there's nothing really to string them onto. I can't tie this, I can't tie the string around anything. 
So, you know, I'm kind of working with what I got. Instead, we're, we're putting them on these dehydrator trays, which has airflow coming up from the bottom. Um, and I'm gonna rotate these things. You know, maybe one day I'll put them on their side. One day I'll do it like this. I don't know. But for now, they're kind of just sitting on their calyx, getting them dried, moving them around. We'll check on them, make sure they're not molding. They shouldn't mold because this fruit is incredible. It really has the perfect characteristics for drying. So I think you guys should try it. It's a wonderful treat. We'll keep you guys updated. Really about 15, 20, 30 days from now, I'll keep you guys updated and show you guys the results. We may have to move them. I recommend that you know, maybe it's not working in one particular location. Try it out in different locations throughout your house. You know, think of a place that's dry and has good airflow. That's really the two keys here. And you can do this yourself. Drying persimmons is, cred is incredible, guys. I've done it multiple ways, different ways. I think this is probably the best. And um, we'll see how it turns out. All right, guys. Take care.